What's up guys, we're going to be running a combined cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery attack. We'll be making use of this lab, exploiting cross-site scripting to perform cross-site request forgery. Without further ado, let's fire up the lab. First of all, let's just check out some of the basic functionality of a user account. So if we head to the My Account section, we're given some credentials for a regular user. And if we log in, you'll see that we have the option to change our email. So let's set it to something different. Let's choose update email and let's check out the subsequent HTTP request, which was created. So in Burp Suite, we can see that a post request was created. It was sent to the endpoint forward slash my account forward slash change email. First of all, we have the new email that we want to change to with the key of email. Then we have a second parameter with the key of CSRF. This stands for cross-site request forgery. And what we see here is a cross-site request forgery token. And the idea is we can't post to this particular endpoint and change our password without the cross-site request forgery token. This is really what stops us from being able to change the email of another user because simply we won't have access to their cross-site request forgery token. Now there is a situation where the token is not going to be able to protect a user from someone changing their email. And that's if there is also a possible cross-site scripting attack. The idea behind the cross-site scripting attack is it can execute arbitrary JavaScript in the victim's browser. And of course, JavaScript has access to the DOM and can therefore access the cross-site request forgery token. So JavaScript can take that token and submit a malicious request on behalf of the victim. So if we head back to our lab, we'll see that there is a blog section with posts and it's possible to leave a comment on a blog post. And the idea is that this particular comment field is susceptible to cross-site scripting attacks. We can actually make use of angle brackets inside this comment input, which means that we can leave script tags we can therefore make use of JavaScript. If you imagine for a minute that we are inside the victim's browser, we'll see that it's very straightforward to access the cross-site request forgery token. In fact, if we take a quick look at the page source, we'll see that when we get to the post comment form, there is a hidden input field with the name CSRF, and we see it has a value, which is the cross-site request forgery token. Since that's part of the DOM, we can just access that with JavaScript. So we could do something like document dot get elements by name. The name we are looking for is CSRF because remember this particular element has a name attribute of CSRF and then we can simply call dot value. But first we'll specify index zero then dot value. And you can see it's that easy to access the value of the cross site request forgery token. So let's take a quick look at the payload that we can write to post into the comment box. So initially there'll be a cross-site scripting attack. And when the victim visits this page, then the JavaScript that we're looking at right now is going to be executed on the victim's browser within the context of their session. So sometimes cross-site request forgery is also nicknamed session writing. And I think that nickname helps to understand what's taking place. We can't change or post to the change email endpoint on behalf of the victim because we don't have access to the cross-site request forgery token that only exists within the context of the victim session. So this is why it's referred to as session writing because the cross-site scripting attack has access to all of the data that's part of the victim session, including the cross-site request forgery token. So we can manipulate the victim into sending the request to the change email endpoint and including that CSRF token. So really it's the victim that's making the request. It's just that they're not doing it intentionally. They likely may not even realize the attack's taking place because the attack is run automatically by their browser. So let's take a quick look at this payload. What is this JavaScript doing? First of all, we are creating a new variable token and we are assigning the value of that cross-site request forgery token to that variable. And we've just used this JavaScript in the console document dot get elements by name csrf index zero dot value we then use javascript to create a new form we make use of the inbuilt form data class this is a very standard way of creating forms with javascript and we saw that there were only two parameters when we checked out the post request in burp 
parameter number one is the new email. So we're going to change the email to evil at hacker.net. And we're also going to append to the form the CSRF token. And we're just passing in the value of the variable there. Now we need to actually create the post request. So JavaScript has an inbuilt API for creating HTTP requests known as fetch. So we are going to create a post request to the endpoint my account forward slash change email. We've set no cause mode. And for the body of this request, we've just passed our data variable. So remember everything that we've attached to this form, we've saved in this data variable. And now we're just passing that as the body of this post request. So that's our exploit, that's our payload. Let's copy this. So we'll paste our exploit into the comment field and we just need to fill out some extra information here because there is some verification on the form. So this just allows us to submit the form. Let's post the comment. Now the idea behind this lab is that anytime we create a new post on a blog comment, the lab simulates a victim visiting that page. That's why we've got the flag popped up here immediately. A pretend victim has visited that page with our comment on the blog post. The JavaScript has executed. The post request has been sent to the change email endpoint. Of course, since we have access to the victim session, we also have access to their CSRF token. So that's sent along with a HTTP request. The server looks at the request and says, well, if you want to change the email, we need to prove that it's you. So where is your CSRF token? Oh, good. You've attach that to the post request. I can verify that CSRF token. I know that this is really you. Of course, it isn't really you. The server doesn't know this though, because it just verifies the token, processes the request. We've now changed the email on the victim's account. Why is that relevant? Well, think about the way that more or less any service that you use online works. If you have access to the email that's attached to a specific account, you generally have access to that entire account. Because what happens if you forget the password on an account? You reset the password. Where does the reset password link get sent? It gets sent to your email. So having your own personal email attached to an account essentially means that you have taken over that account. Okay, so in summary, this was a cross-site scripting attack followed by a cross-site request forgery attack or session riding as it's sometimes nicknamed. Hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for watching guys.